What's going on, everybody? It's your boy JP back with another back with another video, and today we have the T-Mobile Revel 5G sold by Metro PCS. That's right. There's a lot to talk about in this video. A lot to talk about, and um, I've had this device. Let's see. Uh, today is Labor Day. Um, September 7th, I think, and I've had this device for not even four hours, and uh, I, I picked it up at Metro PCS, not T-Mobile, despite the branding, which I'll get to. Um, I really like this phone, y'all. I like this phone a lot more than I thought I was. I haven't done my video yet for the blue G90 Pro. And uh, I like that phone a lot more than I thought I was going to. But this phone, <laughs> th this phone is just, if you have money for the G90 Pro from Blue, um, and you're a T-Mobile or Metro, by T-Mobile customer, get this phone instead. Seriously. It's it's that good. Um, I am working on getting this unlocked right now for AT&T because it does have the bands for LTE and 5G for AT&T. Uh, but T-Mobile and Metro phones not only cost more to unlock, um, you know, if, if they're not due, if they're not, if they don't meet the requirements, you know, you can use third parties, but, you know, T-Mobile and Metro phones typically cost the most, and they also take the longest. It's not like a 24-hour time. They take three to seven days, sometimes more, and the services go down a lot. So you have to be really patient with third-party services that try to unlock these. But if it's successful, I'll let y'all know in the description at a later date. I'll update it with with with, with where and how and, and what I used to uh, get it unlocked if, if anybody's interested. And I'll let y'all know my experience using it on AT&T as well because as most of you know, that's who I typically use. Um, of course, here at my house, I only get LTE on T-Mobile and AT&T. But uh, I go down the street, I get 5G on AT&T and T-Mobile as well. Um, I did briefly have 5G with AT&T here at the house. I, I know I'm sure I've stated that in one of my other videos reviewing a phone with AT&T 5G, but uh, it, it didn't last very long. Um, I don't know if they're just in the process of upgrading the towers and I lost the signal and maybe I'll get it back at a later date. Maybe I'll get T-Mobile 5G, etc. But this device, um, um, and first, let me show it to y'all right quick. Look at that. That magenta design is absolutely gorgeous. And um, it has the hole punch. I don't know if you can see it. But um, your speakers, your Type C. I think it is stereo speakers, by the way, too. And that power button right there, y'all, that you see, that magenta power button, that also acts as a notification light. It is so awesome. It has, a, it has an LED light that goes around it. It is awesome. It's one of the simplest yet coolest features about this phone. This phone has a lot of cool features, man. You do have your headphone jack, believe it or not. You saw your uh, your, your fingerprint sensor there on the back there. Excuse my finger nose there, y'all. I have, um, they grow so fast. Sometimes I can't keep both cutting them there. I'm not, not trying to gross anybody out there, y'all. I just work a lot and I try to do these videos too. And I've, I've gotten a lot of phones here lately to review. Sorry for the camera stutter there too. I'm actually using the Red Magic 5S for this, which, um, Definitely has the hardware uh, to be a great camera, but it it just the software just lags. The 5G Red Magic had that issue, and the Red Magic 3 and 3S had those issues as well. So it's just something that they really need to work on. But we'll save that for a different story. Uh, if 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 y'all remember in January at CES 2020, uh, before the coronavirus outbreak. TCL showcased a bunch of new phones that were coming to the U.S. The uh, the 10L, the 10 Pro, and the 10 5G. Coincidentally, the 10 5G physically was like the 10L. It wasn't getting the cool dual curved Samsung style AMOLED screen that the 10 Pro had. It was instead getting an LCD screen, I'll bet a little bit bigger than the 10L. Uh, I think the 10L is a 6.3, 6.2. Y'all could correct me in the comments, but this phone is an LCD. Uh, it does use TCL's Next Vision technology, which is absolutely gorgeous. By far, 
if I've ever if I've ever talked about another phone having the most gorgeous LCD display, can that TCL? I read great stories. I, I I watched great videos on the 10L that talked about how great its LCD screen was. I had the 10 Pro, which was AMOLED, so it was already going to be great. Um, but this has the LCD like the 10L, TCL's next vision technology, and it is gorgeous. It is stunning. This phone even has um, the always-on display, just like the OLED-powered 10 Pro, which most OLED-powered phones have, but you don't find it a lot with LCD phones. And um, that alone, along with along with just the overall clarity of the phone, the blacks look amazing. You would swear it is an OLED panel. I actually had to look up the specs when I brought this home to make sure, you know, I was thinking to myself, okay, because this phone, this this is this is technically the TCO 10 5G, but it ha it's been heavily modified. It's gone through a redesign. Uh, so I was thinking to myself, okay, well maybe T-Mobile managed to slip in an OLED screen in their redesign versus the LCD. Who knows? Uh, but it is LCD. Uh, Would have been great if it was OLED, but man, I am telling y'all, you are not gonna miss a thing. This this screen is gorgeous, man. It is full HD. Uh, 19, uh, 19 by 9 aspect ratio. Uh, again, it has your punch hole design. Um, it's to the, uh, you know, to the, to the upper left-hand corner. So it's non-intrusive whenever you're gaming. It's, it's kind of out of the way. Your palm covers it, so that works out great. Um, this did release at Metro the same time as T-Mobile. They didn't bother giving it a different branding. Um, for those of you that don't know the Revel's history, I, I do know most of it. Um... The first two generations, Revel 1, Revel 2. I'm pretty sure both of those generations had two devices apiece. Uh, they were manufactured by ZTE and Alcatel. Um, I don't know if I don't know if 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 both were manufactured by I don't remember if both were manufactured by one manufacturer one year and then the other the next year, or if there was a mixture. Um, if y'all remember the um, Ah oh, man, my, my memory's going blank here. I think it was either the Pixel 2 or the Pixel 3, where one was manufactured by HTC, but the other one was manufactured by LG. The one manufactured by LG had an LG OLED screen, but the one manufactured by HTC had a Samsung OLED screen or something like that. It's been a while. Um, but um, the first two generations were a mix, basically, long story short, between Alcatel and ZTE. It was, you know, one did one did one generation, the other did the other one, or, or if there was two apiece, one did one, the other did the other, something like that. The third generation last year, they were Motorola phones. There was uh there was two of them. They were they were based on the um, the Moto G sevens. Uh, one was the Moto, just the plain Moto G seven, the vanilla G seven, I think, or it might have been the G seven Play, the, the 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 lower end one. And then the other, and, and then the, uh, and then they had the the, the G7 uh, Plus that wasn't released elsewhere in the U.S. The G7 Plus was only available overseas unless you got the Revelry Plus from T-Mobile, which was the G7 uh, Plus. Otherwise, we had the G7 Power, the G7, and the G7 Play. And one of the other Revel phones last year was 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 one of those other phones that we did get as a vanilla Motorola device unlocked. Um, uh, but, um, um, and, and that Revelry Plus, I had it, I never did a review on it, but it was a really nice phone, actually. Um, they did a really good job there. Uh, very fast charging. Had USB Type-C to USB Type-C, which they didn't bring back on this. But then again, this isn't a Motorola phone, but this, if you're going by the Revel, the Revel name, this would be its successor, quote unquote. But it's really not. But... What T-Mobile did with the Revel phones, they actually did bring them to Metro. Almost all of them. There was a couple. There was like maybe one exception, and I think it had to do last year with the Motorola's. Um, last year, the Motorola G7 Power did go to Metro, if I'm not mistaken, and it kept that name, G7 Power. G7 Power wasn't one of the two G7 variants that went to T-Mobile as the Revelries. Um, again. One was the Plus that wasn't available elsewhere, and then the other one was either the Standard or the Play, but not the Power. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a year. I've slept since then. 
And it gets confusing at a lot of times too, especially when you try to keep up with it like I do. I try to keep all these specs in my head over all these years. Um, but um, um, the years before that, the first two generations, the ZTEs and the Alcatels, they actually all released on Metro, but they actually kept the original manufacturer's name, ZTE or Alcatel, with their own names. And, and there was no T-Mobile branding beyond the Metro branding. Um, you know, it, it was just... Um, it was a. Uh, they acted as an entirely different device, but you could take a case from one of them and use it on the other one, etc. I had one that I bought for my mom, and it was the same thing as this one, an Alcatel phone. It was, it was, yeah, it was, it was just one of those, one of those confusing things. Um, and you know, and this was this was actually one of those deals where I I could have actually seen T-Mobile, obviously having this as the Revel 5G on T-Mobile, and then bringing it to Metro, you know, a week or two, a month later or so. As the TCL 10 5G, because that's essentially what this phone is. Verizon is slated to actually get the 10 5G from what I've read, and it is going to be an unmodified version past getting millimeter wave added to it, which it did not originally have when it was showcased at CES back in January. Um, but we've had a lot of phones that came out on GSM networks and then got the millimeter wave treatment when it went to Verizon, like the Velvet, the A71 5G from Samsung, you know, etc. Uh, the major redesign is really in the back. It's really in the back. Um, if you pull up pictures of the TCL 10 5G, you'll see that it had the hor it had, had a horizontal camera array, just like the, uh, the 10 Pro and the 10L. It may have also had four cameras, whereas this only has three because the fourth area is the flash. Uh, the main camera is a 48 megapixel. Uh, the front facing one uh, that's in the punch hole is a, is a 16 megapixel, I think, or a 20 megapixel, something like that. But the main rear is a, is a 48, and then you got the other two. It's not quad, it's triple on the back. T-Mobile's um, advertisement for this phone is kind of misleading because it says quad camera setup, but... They're actually counting the front-facing camera as one of the four cameras altogether. They're counting it as altogether. The 10 5G, if I'm not mistaken, actually had five altogether. I could be wrong about that, though, because I know the 10 Pro did. But that's not a good that's not a good example to go by because there's a lot of things about the 10 Pro that make it that already make made it a better phone than the 10 5G beyond the 5G connectivity that it was missing out of. Um, you know, as you know, the 10 Pro, besides the dual edge AMOLED screen, it had a Snapdragon 675, whereas a 10L had the 665. The 5G 10 is, you know, it's supposed to be powered by the 765, which is, you know, what this has, the Rebel 5G. That's how it gets its 5G connectivity. It has a, um, the, the 765. What else is interesting about this phone is, for some reason, T-Mobile is not advertising this as having the Snapdragon 765G, but only the 765. I can confirm that this does have the 765G, the gaming variant. It's clocked at 2.4 gigs instead of 2.3. Um, so for those of you that, that that matters to, this has that. The OnePlus Nord, I think, was a 765G. The Motorola Edge was only the 765. The upcoming... Moto, the upcoming Motorola One 5G that's going to AT and T, which I had as the as the international Moto, uh, Moto G 5G that I've reviewed, was just a 765 and it only had four gigs of RAM. This has six. Um, this is a way better phone. This it really is. I mean, I say what you will about Motorola. I I, I am a big Motorola fan. I love their stock Android. Um. Uh, just like I love, uh, uh, you know, Oxygen OS, uh, you know, for being stockish, I should say. Um, you know, shout out to my one, um, my one YouTube um, viewer. I don't know if he subscribes to me. Um, me and him always debate. Um, he's 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 been on this. He's been watching my video since day one. He's doing. I always talk about that. Corrects me whenever I say stock Android. Um, he's um, actually become. <laughs> He's he's my biggest critic, but he's also he's also one of my favorite uh, people to debate with in my comments. That uh, he he always he, he keeps up with with my videos and uh, he calls me out on everything. But you know what though, man, I, I've grown accustomed to that. I like that. I've called him out on things before, and you know, and it's all good. That's that's there for. I love to debate, not argue. Um, 
Uh, I, I really do appreciate y'all. I know I don't have many viewers, but you know the ones I have, I appreciate y'all very much. Um, but yes, it's the 765G powered, 6 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs internal, and expandable memory. And the reason why I emphasize on that isn't just because I'm a big fan of, of, of expandable memory, but it's because it's because if you look at this phone, look at that for a minute. Beyond the color, beyond the T-Mobile logo, look at the fingerprint sensor and the camera square. Look at the front with the punch hole. Okay? And just, just, just to show y'all, this thing is as stock as Motorola. This is as stock as Motorola. And actually, actually, it's closer to a Pixel than a Motorola. This, when I set this phone up, it had that same background music feature mm -hmm. um, that I've only ever seen on Pixel phones. Uh, the Pixel 4 and 4XL that I had last year had that feature. I'm sure the 3s before it had it and the 2s got it passed down and whatnot. Uh, but it was my first experience with the 4, uh, 4XL, and then the 4A a month ago. And I've never seen it again on any other phone besides a Google phone until now. This phone, when I set it up, it had that that feature. It had that feature for um, for the for the background music, um, which I just thought was really cool. I've never seen it on any other phone. Motorola's don't have that. And uh, you saw it's stock has the stock app drawer, it has your gestures. I just prefer the uh, the, um, the 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 navigation, but it's the old school way. Um, and um, you have to excuse that that vibration noise. Y'all, someone's trying to call me, and I'm not answering it. That's why you hear that vibration noise. But, um, I mean, uh, th this phone is closer to the, the Pixel interface than a Motorola is. E even, even, even a OnePlus phone. It's, it, this is the closest I've actually seen a phone, you know, to the Pixel experience. The, uh, the search bar, I didn't put that down on the bottom like I do some of my phones to mimic the Pixel launcher. That's already down there and you can't remove it. Again, just like the Pixel UI or the Pixel UX, whatever you want to call it. Um... As you know, the Pixel 4a is about to come come out, uh, come back out next month with a larger model with 5G, obviously powered by the 765. It's going to have 6 gigs of RAM, just like the 730 variant that's already out without 5G. And then there's also going to be a fifth generation Pixel that's going to coincide with the 4a 5G with the same chipset and 8 gigs of RAM. Um, the 4a 5G is supposed to be the largest of the three. And this is large. This is a 6.53 inch screen. We'll round down and say 6.5. And uh, full HD resolution, which is what the, the 4A 5G is expected to also have. The 5 will probably be quad HD with the, uh, with the higher refresh rate. Um, but, um, man, and this screen is beautiful. It's not OLED, but it's gorgeous. I mean, basically what I'm getting at is... This... <sighs> I mean, I'm, I may catch some a lot of flack for saying this because of the lack of the OLED, but this is this is a OnePlus Nord and even a Pixel 4a 5G killer, man. Like I'm serious. I mean, you're you're looking at the 4a 5G right here. Pixel Experience, stockish Android, stockish Android Pixel Experience, the UX, whatever you want to call it. Pixel has a lot of Pixel features. That Motorola's and Oxygen OS don't even have. Um, facial recognition works fantastic, I might add. The physical fingerprint sensor on the back works amazingly well, just like it did on the Pixel 4a. Um, but I mean, you got the same punch hole, you got the same design in the back, because the Pixel 4a 5G is supposed to have more than one camera sensor. It's not going to have three, but it's going to have more than one. Obviously, that would be two. Um, but... Um, I mean, that's all glass design. It's Gorilla Glass 5, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even 6. Um, and, uh, I mean, y'all, it, it, it's, it's, the, the quality on this phone is, is amazing. It's a heavy phone, too, but it is. It's a solid heavy, not a junky heavy, not a cheap heavy. This thing, and, I mean, and it, and, it, and it is, I mean, it feels amazing in the hand. And I haven't even got to the price of this phone yet. Y'all, this phone, without any kind of deal, without any kind of incentive, is $400. $399, T-Mobile and, and Metro at T-Mobile. I mean, just that off top. 6 gigs of RAM, Snapdragon 765G, uh, you know, 5G enabled, especially if you're already a T-Mobile Metro or, or Metro customer. 
And actually, if you're a Metro customer, you get this phone discounted without even having to bring a number over. If you're upgrading your device, you get a $100 discount, so it's $300. If you bring your number from another non-T-Mobile carrier, you get $200 off. So it ends up being only $200, which is what I paid for. $200. 200 smacks for this phone. This phone has flagship, has near flagship specs. I mean, if you if you if you look past the uh, the the OCD screen, and 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 obviously that also means no in display fingerprint sensor. This phone is a is dang near a flagship. It has a 765G, which is you know which which is the next process, which is the processor right below the 865. I don't even want to hear that the 855 is still more powerful. Maybe the 845. I definitely don't want to hear that. Because at the end of the day, they don't have 5G. I know what you're going to say then. Oh, well, the, the 855 and 855 Plus had 5G. Yeah. Yeah. How many phones had the 855 and 855 Plus? And then how many phones with those same processors actually had 5G enabled? I'll wait. Because... Cause You'll barely be able. You, you won't need both hands to count them. There wasn't many at all. Um, you're not going to get a 765 power phone without 5G. And uh, I mean, that's just that, that's just you know that's just the gist of it. And um, and uh, I'm telling you, and 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 this this thing can game just as well. You're not going to notice a difference. I mean, it, you know, the, the 855 might load you know Fortnite a couple seconds faster, you know, or PUBG, but you're not going to really notice it. I mean, uh, um, and, and with the age of streaming, like Stadia, GeForce Now, and uh, and uh, and the uh, the uh, X Cloud from Microsoft, uh, I mean, you know, that faster data connection is 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 is, is going to give you that advantage. This has it; those don't. This has five G. So I don't want to hear about, you know, oh, well, the 855 from last year is faster. Nah, depends what we're talking about here. You know, there's, there's different there's different measurements. You know, there's different things to go by. This is obviously going to have the better modem. The, it's, it's more future-proofed. So I don't want to hear that. I mean, as I've said in another video, the 765, it's, um, are there other 2020 5G Chipsets between you know you know you know that's that that's better than the 765 and not quite as good as the 865. Absolutely, y'all have heard me talk a lot recently about the Dimensity chipsets from MediaTek. That <laughs> they are that bridge right there, and they are amazing. And I will be getting my hands on the T-Mobile variant of the LG Velvet this week with the Dimensity 1000C because that is gonna have um, LG V60 near performance because. The V60, as you know, has the A65. The Velvet elsewhere has a 765, but the T-Mobile variant coming out this Thursday actually has the, the uh, Dimensity 1000C. And the 1000 is way closer in performance to the A65 than the 765. It's and, and, and I and I and I'm and I mean by a huge margin, it's way more powerful than the 765, and and it's it's knocking at the door of the A865. A so for 588 bucks. The T-Mobile variant of the Velvet, not to get off subject, that is a great price because that that is basically a flagship. I mean, it's 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 basically like the V60, but in a more elegant design. If well, of course, the design is subjective. You may prefer the V60, but again, that's for a different video. We're talking about this phone right here, the Velvet Five. Blah, 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 I'm getting myself mixed up. We're talking about the Revel 5G right here, the 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 TCL 10 5G, if you want to call it that. Um, this phone is great, y'all. It really is. I am so impressed with this phone. I, and I barely even dug in. It has a really nice, uh, braided USB Type-C cable with it. There's your, uh, your, um, your fast charge, uh, with your T-Mobile logo on it. Um, your, uh, your literature, your SIM ejector tool is below that. Your box, the, the, the phone, obviously, which I've already gone under. Gotta check out that power. That power button's really cool what it does on here. I am so sorry for the stuttering here, y'all. This um, this video on this uh, Nubia is 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 video is coming out great, but it stutters a lot. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it with that said. And I had I had a couple more things to talk about, but I'm gonna go ahead and just end it there, just because of this camera here. Sorry about that, y'all. But yeah, 
Yo, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe I can show it to you if I turn the phone off because I do have a... Let me see. Now, because I've already viewed it, I guess. Wait, let's see. Maybe I accidentally turned it off, but you see it has that always on display there too. But, um, but yeah, man. I've already gotten a software update for this phone. Firmware, security patch, and Google Play patch. Um, so they've been on top of it too, but fantastic phone, man. And um, if the unlock works for it, and I get it working on AT&T, the unlock would have only cost me 50 bucks. Uh, they actually generally go for more than that here lately. Again, T-Mobile phones are not cheap to unlock if you're not um, within that 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 time quote that they'll unlock it for you for. Um, especially on Metro, because obviously the phone's already paid for, but they have other clauses that you have to go by. But uh, man, if you're interested in, uh, I mean, the Nokia is supposed to come out with the the uh, the eight dot three five G. That's not going to be any better than this phone. Well. Well, it will have a 6.7 or 6.8 inch screen. So I guess by that standard, it may be, and it will be near stock Android. Uh, but it's, it's not, it's not going to be OLED. It's going to be LCD just like this phone. Um, the cameras remain to be seen. Um, yeah, this is a fantastic phone. $400. Forget what you know about the Pixel 4a and how, and, and, and how it's, it's, it, how it's a better way to spend $400 than the iPhone SE2. This phone is a better way of spending $400. And you can get it for, for $300 and even $200. Uh, and, and like, imagine, okay, imagine I bought this phone for $200 and my unlock works for $50. That's $250. And this phone would be unlocked. Okay, I mean, you can get this phone, You when you purchase it, of course, you have to get the, you have to get a plan with it. Some Metro phones require the, the, the 50 or 60, like the iPhones, but others only require the 40 which is what i got this with so that's 40 so you know you know it's it's something that i won't even end up using but it's the extra 40 i had to spend but it's still 2 plus 40 to 40 plus 50 that's you know 290 i mean man y'all this phone is freaking amazing i highly recommend this phone anyways hope y'all enjoyed the video sorry it kind of ran over again and got long sorry for the stuttering in the video Peace out, y'all. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. I got other videos coming still. The uh, the blue G90 Pro, which I don't even want to do now that I got this dang phone. Uh, the Note 20. Um, and I um, um, got the Tickwatch GTX coming in this week. I'm also going to get the T-Mobile Dimensity 1000 powered LG Velvet. Uh, 5G. It does work with the dual screen. I'm just having problems finding the dual screen, but people actually thought that the Dimensity variant didn't work with the dual screen. It does, but T-Mobile is not actually going to sell the dual screen to my knowledge, but it does work with the dual screen. I got confirmation from more than one source. Anyways, y'all, peace out. Hit me up in the comments. I'm so happy I got to bring this phone to y'all. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all check it out, man. If you're a Metro or T-Mobile customer already, I know I've already said this a million times in this video, you're not worried about unlock, man, dude, and you're an Android fanatic, you don't care about the iPhone, and even if you were, I would still say this is better than the iPhone SE 2, even if you were an iPhone fanatic, dude, this is better than the Pixel 4a, get it, I mean, seriously, y'all, go and get this dang phone, it is freaking amazing.